We now know at the same time that you and I were watching the Trump Kamala debate, so was Taylor Swift. What are we doing? And we've got her endorsement, okay? And she was watching, she went to Instagram and she posted like, hey man, listen, in a nutshell, she basically said, Trump's a nasty creep. Kamala cares for me. I believe her. I'm on team Kamala. I'm voting for Kamala. Signed single childless cat lady, like childless cat lady. She signed it. What are we doing? Which is basically a stab at just everything that Donald Trump and everything stands for. It's I, I was going to read it, but I just now in the moment decided not to because guess what? It's my podcast, Aww. you know? And so Taylor Swift is now in line and rooting for Kamala. And listen, man, Elon Musk tweeting about her, dude, absolutely and utterly disgusting. Elon Musk responding to Taylor Swift and her endorsement for Kamala Harris with the tweet, Fine, Taylor, you win. I'll give you a child and guard your cats with my life. Hey, man. What are we doing? You're disgusting. You are an utterly disgusting pig. I pray to the gods when I tag Elon Musk in this tweet, he sees it. I hope he sees it. I know he won't, but I pray to the lords that he sees it and knows that me, no one who fucking matters or has any ounce of a penny compared to his billions, gives a shit that he is the most utterly disgusting person on this planet. I don't care if you can put up people in space with fucking 14 100 kilometers away. The billionaire paid its way. Billionaires are just paying to go to space. What now. are we doing? They're leaving us all behind, and thank God for that. Can Elon be next? Why wasn't Elon Musk in the rocket? I want to know why Elon Musk wasn't in that rocket and potentially had the potential to possibly get sucked into space. I wish he would have been in that rocket and maybe accidentally let go and got stuck in space. He probably would have collided with his Tesla and that's how he would have died and he would have been a happy fucking man. What are we doing? And not this disgusting piece of shit that we see commenting on our precious Taylor Swift's endorsement. Listen, you don't need to agree with the celebrities, okay? We already know that a handful of Donald Trump diehard supporters have a problem with Swift anyways. Don't get me started on how she is definitely not the fucking reincarnated daughter of the world's most known hatred Satanist who died in 1497, okay? What are we doing? Like, it's something we don't need to discuss right now, but Taylor Swift has moved the needle. Over 330,000 of her 280 million Instagram followers since that post have gone to the website where you can register to vote since she announced her endorsement. Listen, I'm calling it now. I think it's pretty much over for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And speak, I mean, listen... The Elon Musk thing, to wrap that right now, fucking Travis Kelsey. If Travis Kelsey was any man of a man with the mustache and the fucking haircut, he should go find Elon Musk right now and punch him square in the fucking face. What are we doing? It's so funny when people even like J.D. Vance uh, see and hear about this Taylor Swift endorsement for the first time. Everyone was caught on off guard. The vice presidents, Donald Trump, Kamala. We all have reactions from them on the Taylor Swift endorsement. But J.D. Vance has the best one. Here he is. Take a look. I mean, I think there are a lot of issues that have been talked about lately that don't really matter all that much. Um, we, you know, we can guess what some of them are. Um, but it was interesting last night that Taylor Swift gave her endorsement of Harris and and waltz um a right head after. nod you saw it watch his head go watch his head we, go. yeah we can guess what some of them Ready? are um but it was interesting last night that taylor swift gave her endorsement of harris and ah. and waltz um, ah. right after she what are we doing three million followers on Instagram. 283 million followers sorry i covered that up with a button 283 million followers i say it again the 10 percent rule is true 
283 million, 10%, 330,000 people went to the register, vote.gov, whatever the fucking website is, and watched a dude. I mean, she has the influence. And J.D. Vance's response is And I'm sure that someone incredible. brought to your attention that she signed it, childless cat lady. This is a phrase that you are going to hear in your, in your uh, dreams. Recently, I was made aware that AI of me falsely endorsing Donald Trump's presidential run was posted on his site. It really conjured up my fears around AI and the dangers of spreading misinformation, and it brought me to the conclusion that I need to be very transparent about my actual plans for this election as a voter. The simplest way to combat misinformation is with the truth. I'll be casting my vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz in the 2024 presidential election. I'm voting for Kamala Harris because she fights for the rights and because I believe uh, and oh, sorry, she fights for the rights and causes I believe need a warrior to champion them. I think she is a steady handed, gifted leader, and I believe we can accomplish so much more in this country if we are led by a calm, uh, if we are led by calm and not chaos. I was so heartened and impressed by her selection and running mate, Tim Waltz, who has been standing up for LGBTQ plus rights, IVF and women's rights for uh, rights to her own body for decades. I mean, signed with love and hope, the childless cat lady. She's the queen. She's the mother. She says, all. it's the end all be all. She has spoken. It's Kamala Harris's election. I'm sorry. What are we doing? But at this point in time, I'm going to need a lot of people to start wrapping their heads around the fact that Kamala Harris is probably going to be the next and first female president of the United States, okay? I know that's hard to hear and fully understand right now, but I'm giving you a lot of time to prepare, and I think it's it's you need to start really dialing in on the fact that this is probably going to happen. And your nightmares probably for many years to come. How do you speak to women voters um, who obviously see what he has to say. They, uh, they care about what she thinks? Of course. Well, look, we we admire Taylor Swift's music, but I don't think most Americans, whether they like her music or fans of hers or not, are going to be influenced by a billionaire celebrity who I think is fundamentally disconnected from the interests uh, and, and, and the problems of most Americans. Look, when growth. Oh! What are we doing? Say it again. Say it one more time so I can fully understand. It's fundamentally disconnected from the interests uh, and, and, and the problems of most Americans. Look, when grocery. Send it back. I they like her music or fans of hers or not, are going to be influenced by a billionaire celebrity who I think is fundamentally disconnected from the. Influenced by a billionaire celebrity who is fundamentally disconnected with the people and who. They are, and their everyday struggle. What are we doing? And so, if J.D. Vance, if J.D. Vance had a moment, just 10 extra seconds to think about that, if you were to draw up a list, let's, let's do it right now. We're going to do it live. Hopefully, J.D.'s watching. Let's do it live right now. Draw up a list of billionaires that we can think of who don't really care about us average citizens making thousands of dollars a year instead of billions, and when it comes to things like grocery stores and inflation, when bread goes up by $4, Taylor Swift doesn't notice. So Swift is number one. What other billionaires can you think of that don't give a rat's ass and that it doesn't really affect how you live, your financial status, or whether or not bread at the grocery store is a few more dollars? Can you think of anyone? We, we admire Taylor Swift's music, but I don't think most Americans, whether they like her music or fans of hers or not, are going to be influenced by a billionaire celebrity who I think is fundamentally name ready. disconnected think of someone, from the interests okay. uh, and, and, and the problems of most Americans. Look, when grocery prices go up by 20 percent, it hurts most Americans. It doesn't hurt Taylor Swift. When housing prices become unaffordable, it doesn't affect Taylor Swift or any other billionaire. It does affect middle class Americans all over our country. And so I think our pitch to women voters. It's done. What are we Trump? doing? It's Donald Trump. He's talking about he it's he's talking about Taylor Swift when in reality you can replace Donald Trump's name. JD Vance, it's like, bro, this is it. It's all unraveling. As soon as Biden pulling Biden from the race was the best decision the Democratic Party could have done. Maybe not for this country, but for themselves as a party? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, because Trump had it in the bag against Biden. 
Now that Biden's gone and we've got Kamala out of the coconut tree and speaking the truth and speaking her mind and saying what people actually want to hear and can relate to, Donald Trump has now become the babbling old man. What are we doing? And it's kind of getting to the point where you can see that needle tipping and boy, oh boy, the Swifties have just secured a vote.